still building a program for men and women. Um, going out, we've signed three um, three women already for the women's track program, and we signed one guy. So we'd love to win number 10, um, have nine under my belt, and that makes me the winningest coach here at Tennessee State University. Mm-hmm. But I'm looking for number 10. Welcome to TSU Human Performance Sports Science Podcast, where we dive into the fascinating world of sports science and innovation, right here at Tennessee State University. We are your hosts. I'm Neil Mone. And Franka Sindicic. And today we are taking you on an exciting journey to educate, entertain, and keep you up to date of happenings right here on our campus. In each episode of TSU HPSS, we'll bring you exclusive interviews with our expert faculty, coaches, student athletes, and our students from our departments who are making stride in this field. You will gain the insights into the latest training techniques, nutrition strategies, and sports psychology breakthroughs that are now shaping the future of sports performance or while bringing it to you from an HBCU perspective. Hello everybody and welcome back to TSU HPSS podcast. Today with us is our coach Cheese, our track coach and Olympian athlete that is coaching here now, Trek, on our Tennessee State University. Welcome, coaches. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah, we're more than pleased to have you here, and I'm very excited about this podcast. Since Neil and I are both big fans of track and field and sports, so we're looking forward to hear your story. So can you please tell us something about yourself, introduce yourself, and how did you start your journey about with track? All righty. So um, my name is Chandra Cheeseborough. And um, I am the director of track and field, men and women's track at um, Tennessee State. I can start off by saying how I got here in 1970. My sister was a high jumper, and um, she came up to Coach Temple's summer track program. And from the summer track program, she decided that Tennessee was too far from, for her because I'm from Jacksonville, Florida. And so when my mom came home with my sister from that summer track program, I saw that my mom was really disappointed because that would have been an opportunity for my sister. And so I told my mom that I'm going to go to Tennessee State and I'm going to run track and I'm going to make you proud. I can remember that. That was in the sixth grade, and that was in 1970. And then in 1974, we were reintroduced to Coach Temple and uh, we saw Coach Temple at um, the Junior Olympics in Lincoln, Nebraska. And after um, competing in Lincoln, Nebraska, Coach Temple invited me to come to his summer track program in 1975. And from 75 to I graduated high school, I was participating in his summer track program. In 1977, I attended college here and graduated in 81, summer of 81, and um, went on to have a uh, career in track and field, went to the Olympics as a high schooler at 17 years old in Montreal. I was sixth fastest in the world in 100 meters at 17. Um, In 1980, we boycotted, um, so that was not an opportunity to run in Russia. And then I came back to um, Los Angeles and ran in the 84 Olympics where I won two golds and a silver. And uh, from that, continued to run track and went back home and was a a PE teacher and a track coach. And I got a phone call one day and Coach Temple asked me to apply for the job. And I said, I'm not going back to Nashville. (laughs) No. So I didn't apply. And so the next time he called, he had Wilma Rudolph on the phone. And Wilma and I were really good friends. And so Wilma said, um, Cheese, Coach Simple really think that you'll do a great job and, you know, please apply for the, you know, the position. So I did. I went ahead and applied for the position. And when I applied, it was 44 applicants from 44 to 11, from 11 to 4. And 29 years later, I am the director of the track and field program. 
that's such a nice journey. That's that's great. Congratulations, first of all. And uh, I want to ask you, how was it to be coached by Coach Temple? Uh, what's a piece of advice that you still remember to that day? Um, to be coached by Coach Temple was, it was it was an awesome experience, first of all. But Coach Temple did not play. Oh, my God. We were like, whatever he said, it was like E.F. Hutton. You ever heard of that commercial? You believed it. You received it. Uh, he was just a man of integrity. You know, he was uh, he was just a, a good guy, a, a father figure. So, I mean, I was elated to have him as my coach. How was, um, how was TSU? How did you... Um... How did you react to the fact that you were invited by Coach Temple at TSU? What, were you, what, what was your expectation? Well, you know, when I um, end up getting the job, you know, a lot of people was like, oh, you got a lot of a big shoe to follow. And what I settled in is let me just fill my own shoes because his shoes were filled. And so, you know, with him backing me, I knew that I was equipped because I came from the best. I was coached by the best. And so I just had to move forward and do what I knew to do. So um, I, I just came in just expecting to continue the tradition of his winning ways. The, the, the difference was we were going to the Olympics and now we're in a, a conference. And so that was my opportunity to fill my own shoes and start winning conference championships. Uh, I'm going to be a little bit noisy and ask you a question connected to her, your history. So you said you started running track uh, on your in your sixth grade. Yes. Have you ever run before or you just started? Yeah. No, I used to just run in every weekend. My mom and dad got a divorce when I was really young, and I would go over to my dad's house every weekend. And it was some boys or some girls in the neighborhood would want to race me. So, you know, it kind of got started in the neighborhood. But my first official track meet was a sixth grader. I got second place. Wow, that's impressive. Yes. <laughs> first time and then the <laughs> second. Wow. So that is, I, I figured that is where you realize you have the talent to go for more. And was it one of your driving points in your life for, to run well, the like track? This, what happened also um, came from an athletic inclined family. My dad was a baseball player. Oh. My mom played a little basketball, but my sisters ran track and was a great eye jumper. So I would watch them compete over the weekend, and I just knew that I had a you know a talent, especially being out all the boys every weekend. When you were relating your story, you said that in, um, if I'm not mistaken, in 1980, you couldn't uh, go to the Olympic, right? How was that to you? How did you come to that moment? It was disappointing that um, we were not able to go to the 1980 Olympics because of the boycott. Russia was invading Afghanistan, and it's <laughs> it you know it's pointless because Russia is still in Afghanistan <laughs> all these years later. Yeah. And so, what was the point? You know, to me, I think uh, p uh, politics plays a big issue in sports mm -hmm. in everything that we do. So um, it was disappointing, but I still had another opportunity to come back and train for four years yeah. and, and compete in, in Los Angeles. Because you were very young at that time, too, yes. right? Yes, I was still in college. So when you came back after those four years and when you won, won that gold, what was the feeling? Can you tell us something about it? Would you, Who would you thank the most? I mean, besides yourself, that you did a lot of sacrifices in order to do that, but... Did your coach and your family had also a big role in that? Of course. My family had a big part in the support, you know, uh, because you can't do it alone. You know, you have to have that uh, support from your family, from your coaches. At the time, I was coached by Ralph Boston for a little time, and then I went on to uh, another track program where I transferred down to uh, Florida State and trained with a group. Well, no, Florida first. And then we went to Florida State. So, you know, I had some different training partners. Used to train with a lot of guys down in Florida. So it's a combination of people. You don't get nowhere by yourself. You have to rely on people and depend on people, and it'll open doors for you. Yeah. 
So um, after your career as an athlete, then uh, you came back uh, to TSU to, as a coach, right? So now that you, uh, you co you've been coaching for so long, what is your philosophy about coaching? How, how do you coach your athletes? Well, you know, you can't co-teach athlete the same because athletes learn different. So what you have to do is kind of learn the athlete first and then, you know, put the ideas on where then, well, also, let me just go back. I want to know their goals. So once we find out what their goals are, then we can start putting practice into place. Because, again, each athlete is different and everybody have different goals. Some people want to go to the next level. Some people just want to be uh, an OVC champion. And then, you know, so people have an idea of saying, I want to go to the Olympics. But in saying that, some people don't put in enough work to go to the Olympics. Yeah. You can make your mouth say anything. But uh, my, my idea and my philosophy, whatever you start, I always finish. Okay. I would agree with your philosophy. And I also wanted to ask you, did your uh, professional career also Is it helping you to coach the other athletes? Is it easier for you to apply the knowledge on them? Of course, it is easy to apply knowledge because, you know, being around a lot of uh, different athletes, you pick up different things and you go to seminars and, you know, just learn, always learning. Mm -hmm. You know, you never can be closed-minded thinking that you know everything. Yeah. I can remember um, Coach Temple, I believe that he was ahead of his time. Some of the things that they're doing now we did back in 1975. They just got a new name to it. I can remember, you know, the little wickets that they run over. He he did it with milk crates. Same thing, same concept, getting the knees up, you know, yeah. all of those things. So he was a little ahead of his time. So I think that as a coach, you can always learn something from someone else. I agree with that. And since we are both uh, college students, we know that this lifetime can be also struggle for some people so do you experience any issues or hard times when you're coaching the uh, the collegiate athletes i think some of the challenges this day and time the commitment of a student athlete um some of them are just here to be on the program some of them are here to be at the next level some want to win but you have a lot of a mixed uh Mixed company, I'll say, because student athletes are here for certain reasons. Um, some of my challenges, um, I guess, things like it's been 23 years and we have not had a, re a, a resurface of a track. Oh, yeah. yeah, so it that day is about to be ended. So it's coming up, right? Yes, yeah, so they about. said at the end of February, supposed to break ground. So, But still, those are challenges, right. you know. Because this day and time, student athletes are not looking at the history that Tennessee State have. The history is long. We have 40 Olympians to come out of Tennessee State, over 13 gold medal, medals, you know. So they're not looking at the history like when I came through. They're looking at, oh, how pretty is your track? How nice is your weight room? How nice is your training room? And the education and the track part is the last part of it. Mm -hmm. So those things right there have been challenging for me. And again, long time coming for a new track service. Hopefully, yeah. And I, I, I can see it already. I'm pretty sure it's going to look great. It's going to look great. And um, about your coaching style, I know that you, um, you, you coach professionally uh, on the side as well. Uh, I think it was uh, 2015 when I was looking up. Um, what would you say is the biggest difference between a collegiate athlete and a professionally? I'm not talking about level-wise, obviously, but in terms of how would you coach them? Well, um, when you say uh, professional, it's the Olympic level. I was right. a, a coach for the Olympic team and the Pan American team and World Championship team. At that level, um, students are locked in. They want it, you know. They add that next level of competition. Uh, you don't have to pull teeth as much. On this level, you got to uh, encourage, you know, uh, make sure that they are confident, competent about the sport as well. 
So it's just a learning curve from collegiate to the next level of uh, competition. So, so the motivation is different, right? A lot different. The motivation is so much different mm-hmm. because the student athlete on the international level, they have reached a uh, pinnacle of their career, mm-hmm. and they're trying to move on to the next part of their career. And um, athletics in a collegiate level, everybody don't want to go to that next level. So it could be OVC, one and done, and that's it, you know. But for the ones that want to go to the next level, it's going to take some hard work and dedication. Okay, now back to the collegiate students. How do you balance their academics? Do also I know that quite a bit of Czech um, players are in HBSS department. So do you find our department also collaborating with you? Are they helping your students to get better? Um, for me, you know, we do have academic service. So a lot of my student athletes do rely on academic service. They go through study hall. Um, Dr. Jones is very helpful for the ones that are all over here. What ha- helps us as well when we have to leave for a trip, we have the academic letter that goes out to the professor and allow them to make up work, yeah. you know, when they're missing classes. So that's very helpful for the student athlete not to get behind. I can say uh, last mis- last year, um, the men's track program did not have a good GPA, but this past semester they pulled it up to a 2.9, and that's very, you know, good when it was down low. Yeah. Um, the women always continue to be above 3.0. So, okay, great. Yeah, so um, got some good uh, quality academic a- academian athletes on board this year recruited really hard, okay. you know, in the classroom as well as on the track, and it's paying off. Okay, uh, that is good to good to hear that the men's track is also improving. Also, one of the things that I admire about you is that you're fighting for Title IX women's rights in sports, especially uh, black women in sports. Uh, so last year, I think spring of 2023, you had a speech with your colleagues about the Title IX and women's in sports, and you hand us a book that your friend wrote down, and she mentioned all of your stories there, and that were very touching. So can you maybe tell us something more about that book and about that speech that you hold on? She um, brought in a lot of uh, Tennesseans mm-hmm. that have given back to the sport and did a collaboration of women in Tennessee and okay. put us yeah. in the book. Yeah. yeah. So, but... Um, Being a part of that book was good because Title IX has uh, opened up an opportunity. I can remember when using Title IX as a ninth grader, Mm -hmm. um, one of the guys on the men's four-by-one relay team got hurt, and I was the anchor leg for the boys' team in 19... Great. It was probably in 1975. I was able to run anchor leg on the boys four by one and we won the relay yeah in in florida so that was a, a opportunity for title nine for me but um title nine is also help with pay pay raise is not equal yet but we're trying to get there but uh yeah allowing women to you know get paid more for the same job that men are doing um so i encourage women to go into the sport we have a lot of females and not coaching track and field there are more men coaching women in track and field than women so I encourage women to try to go into the sport because it's it's wide open and it's uh, a few of us still uh lastly what are some of your goals for the upcoming year so some of my goals um and it's probably um not just for this year I would love to win OVC championship on the men's side. Mm-hmm. We have never won on the men's side. Still building a program for men and women. Um, going out, we've signed three um, three women already for the women's track program, and we signed one guy. So we'd love to win number 10. I um, have nine under my belt, and that makes me the winningest coach here at Tennessee State University. Mm-hmm. But I'm looking for number 10. Nice. That would be nice. Yeah, that would be great. <laughs> that would be great. I just want to thank you for coming one time to this podcast. And I just want to thank you for uh, 
being so humble and reasonable and helping our athletes to become better with your exclusive experience by being the Olympian. So I'm just very grateful that you're here and that you're trying to improve not just the track, but also the school and the whole reputation of the school. So thank you very much for that. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. You have a good day. Bye-bye.